going to unscrew it. And there's the slot, so I'm going to proceed to put it into the slot. Okay, so I'm gently pushing down on it and it's not going in. Uh, right now the metal contacts are facing down. Away from the pattern button and it doesn't seem to be the right way. So I'm not going to force it. And I'm going to take a quick look here in a second just to make sure. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm not doing it right here. Okay, so take a closer look. Ah, okay, I had it upside down. So there's a little picture here, and it shows you where the notch is. So the metal contacts should be facing towards the power button, upside down. There's a little tiny picture with the little side notch cut out of it. All right, so once you do it the right way, it's easy to go in. And hold down for three seconds, and it turned on. And it has the green light. So that means it's ready to go. Okay, a single push for a photo. Three second hold to turn on and off. And double tap for recording video. Okay, and when it's recording, you see the blinking uh, red light. So you can see some footage of me recording right now. It does have a mic, so it does pick up sound. And, uh, over here, it doesn't look too bad. So I just shut it off right now. Okay, so you just have to get used to how many buttons it takes uh, to turn on and off and when you're recording like that. So you just see uh, the blinking red lights. Okay, single to stop. So I'm going to just put this back. And let's take a look at the tripod mount here. Packaging is nice. This is a quick diagram how to put it on. Very simple instructions. Undo the twisties. Okay, so I'm just going to have to tighten this uh, back plate back on with the indent. It's a push, and that's it. Easy on, easy off. It just as long as the indent matches the back indent there, I'm pretty sure it works fine. Again, this has a very strong grip, so uh, I'm not going to worry about it falling off. And it uses a standard tripod one fourth screw, twenty thread counts. Okay, so I guess you could float like that. So here I have a rice cooker and we're going to just test how strong the actual magnet is. So it holds on to a rice cooker pretty strong strength here. Uh, you can see it just jump uh, automatically to the rice cooker metal piece. You see it takes quite a bit of force to actually push it away from the magnet. Now you're probably wondering why am I uh, trying to knock it off and let it fall. Remember, this camera is actually fairly rugged. Over here, I just put the camera on a slider. Uh, you can see some uh, measurements I'm taking with the video. Remember, this is a very wide angle lens and you can just see you know, how, how much you can actually see from it. Uh, let's take a test now. Well, I place it on a tripod mount, and I'm just walking down the hall of my building. 
Um, this hallway is actually pretty dark. I'm pretty surprised that it does this pretty well. The stairway is extremely dark, and you can see down here. And you can see up there. It automatically adjusts this for the difference in lighting. Uh, here's the shake. There is some wobble, but not too bad. Okay, this is inside a parking garage. Again, very dark. Um, fairly impressed actually with the low light capabilities with this. Some here, more walking in the garage. I mean, it's not super clean like an SLR, but for a, a small camera like this, is not bad. I'm going to try to put it on uh, here, one steady cam piece here, and see how well it works. So I think if I had a little glide cam, steady cam, a stabilization piece, the footage from the video will actually be pretty smooth. Uh, this is here some outside footage. Uh, this is not a study cam. I'm just holding it by the tripod mount. Okay, so let's take a look. I connected the Polaroid camera to my computer. And you can see the file structure and also the, the configuration menu here. So you can see this is how you change the settings. You connect as your USB, change the menu. Uh, you can set the time and the uh, volume of the beep and just hit save it just configures to it all the video is under that along with photos and then that's how it stores it and this is the file structure i did let it run for a long period of time uh, you can see that it saves in uh, five minute increments i think and it's pretty much at See the, the 290 meg per file. So it just breaks it up. That's how it's done. So for $99, this camera is actually pretty good. Um, it's not as good as the GoPro, in my opinion. But hey, you get what you pay for. Uh, it's a huge value. It's very easy to use. And it's pretty much a no brainer. If you want some quick videos, uh, very little hassle, this is the right camera for you, then. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.